is Kate Everson, and I'm an associate editor with Chief Learning Officer Magazine. Today, I'm joined over Skype with Doug Lipp, who is the author of Disney U, How Disney University Develops the World's Most Engaged, Loyal, and Customer-Centric Employees. And today, we're going to talk about just that. Um, we're going to talk about the approaches that Disney used to train their employees to make sure that they're not only doing their jobs well, but they're also conveying the culture through everything they do um, and staying loyal and providing you know, really a good image for the name that we've all come to know. So thanks for being here today, Doug. Thanks, Kate. Looking forward to it. Great. Well, how about we get started? Why don't you just describe to me a little bit about uh, Van France, who was the man who was sort of behind all of this. How about you just talk to me what his approach was when he developed these programs? Certainly. Well, Van was the man hired by Walt to help create the happiest place on earth. And Walt was smart enough to realize that the millions of dollars he poured into the infrastructure, the physical plant called Disneyland, would mean nothing unless it was populated by employees, whom we call cast members, who really cared. And so Van and his initial team of trainers realized that onboarding and continual training was a huge part of this puzzle. Therefore, treating the cast members, the employees, as the most important guest really resonates because if the employees feel valued, then they in turn will exude that kind of heartfelt sincerity when interacting with customers whom Disney calls guests. Right. And you're right. It's very much about making sure that that culture does come through in what they do because they are the face of Disney, essentially, right. when you're, you're dealing with guests. So now you were working on the startups quite a bit with him. What were some of the things that you learned about this development process while you were working with him on the project? Well, Van started the university seven years after Disneyland began, and he was all about challenging status quo. I didn't get to work on any startups until the early 80s in Tokyo in Japan, so I learned a lot from Van about his startup of Disneyland University and the University of Walt Disney World in Florida, and it was all about challenging the status quo. He's even famous for sending a memo to Walt Disney and executives of the day, maybe 10 years into the run of the park, saying, you know what, we've begun to have arthritis of the imagination. We have to step it up. So what I learned from Van was be brutally honest and be a good salesperson. Yeah, that sounds very important, especially when you are trying to sell these programs to employees. So already you had people, I mean, I, it's hard to imagine anyone not wanting to work at Disney, you know, Disneyland <laughs> or in a Disney park. But right. you know, what are some of the steps that they had to take to be able to sell this program? Van talks about, and I write about in Disney, what he calls the four circumstances. He said, without the four circumstances of the Disney University, this thing would not have lasted. And it was, be an organization that innovates and takes calculated risk. Have leadership support. So there's innovate, support. The value of education is woven throughout the organizational DNA. And entertain. There is a Great quote from Walt Disney that says, laughter is no enemy to learning. So the four fundamentals are innovate, support, educate, and entertain. Excellent. Now, what advice do you have for learning leaders who are looking to create a training program like this that you know, emphasizes culture and also promotes that loyalty and entertains and informs? Sure. Well, that's the key, Kate, is that the university, I've had a lot of executives challenge me and say, well, heck, if I had Mickey Mouse leading new hire orientation shears, I'd have no problem getting employees to come to training. And I would say yes for the first time. But if that same employee now goes out into the factory floor or the front lines and somebody says, I don't care what you just learned in the last eight hours of training, this is the real deal, then it would not have legs. So the Disney University is just a vehicle of the organizational culture. So I would make sure that whether your training is in a, in a room or it's five-minute bursts of energy in pre-shift meetings or one-on-one -on -one coaching, it must exude the DNA, the culture of the organization for it to be sustainable. Great. And do you have any you know, advice on how to make sure it does that? Leaders have to be engaged. For example, at Disney Studios, when I would do training, that was a whole different audience than at Disneyland. Disneyland, you get young, energetic, even young, energetic 80-year-olds that want to be in the, in the company. But at the studios where you've got these grizzled Hollywood veterans, I'm not going to battle them when they come into a room thinking, oh, what well, do you have to train me or teach me? So I would call in the chairman of Disney Studios, 
and he would lead a session on creativity. Or I would call in the, the chairman of Disney Imagineering, who would lead a session on creativity. By them, walking the talk made all the difference in the world. And for example, when I would take executives through Disneyland after training, and they would see non-custodial employees picking up trash, they would realize that the picture I showed them a few hours earlier of Walt picking up trash was alive and well, and everybody pitches in. Great. Well, it definitely does sound like you have to have a lot of commit from, commitment from the people upstairs. Culture starts at the top. Otherwise, it's just like painting a, a coat of paint on a rundown building. If that building is run down, metaphorically, if the culture is weak, it doesn't matter if you put up fancy posters or give away t-shirts that say, our employees are number one. If the fundamental DNA is not good, then all that fluff is not going to matter. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. I think we've got some really great information out to our readers. And I, I really appreciate it. One last quote. I'm sorry to interrupt. I oh, absolutely. Go ahead. One of the things that Van Shannon will have us as, as trainers and, and educators was something he learned from Walt, is that you can complain about headcount and budgets all day long. But when we would complain to, to Van, he would say, budgets are always tight. Creativity is always free. That's a great note to end on. Thank you so much for talking to me today, and uh, you know, good luck on all of your future endeavors. Thanks, Kate. Thanks.